This talk is about the enduring value of reading aloud to children. Parents often ask me, how can I get my child to love reading? It's been about 45 years since I began my career as an educator, and I've had to do a lot of research and thinking about this topic. And I always come around to the most beneficial thing of enduring value that parents or teachers can do is read aloud to their children. Much of what I will tell you is taken from uh, two treasures. Reading Magic, Why Reading Aloud to Our Children Will Change Their Lives Forever by Mem Fox, and The Read Aloud Handbook by Jim Trulis. This is my dog-eared copy. I'll begin with a comment by Bruno Bettelheim, whose books, the book, The Uses of Enchantment, won the National Book Award. The very purpose of literature is to provide meaning in our lives, the purpose of all education. The two factors most responsible for giving a child this belief that she can make a significant contribution to life, parents, teachers, and literature. Literature of all mediums is closest to the human heart. I came across someone who knew how to speak about this connection between literature and the human heart. Robert Penn Warren was a three-time Pulitzer Prize winning novelist and poet, the recipient of the National Medal of Literature and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He declares that we read fiction because we like it, there is conflict in it, and conflict is the center of life. It allows us to vent our emotions with tears, laughter, love, and hate. We hope its story can give us clues to our own story. It releases us from life's pressures by allowing us to escape into other people's lives. The effect of literature on children is no different. Children are awakened by the conflict in stories. <clears throat> the awkward little girl finds hope when she hears the ugly duckling. When a child enters a story in the place of Snow White or Max from uh, where the wild things are, we stimulate the soul of creativity, our imagination. In beautiful picture books, such as those by Gerald McDermott, which feature folk tales illustrated in the styles of the culture, children take on the experience of others from these diverse cultures. In Arrow to the Sun, a Pueblo Indian tale, the boy must prove his worthiness to gain his heritage through challenging tasks, and he perseveres. In Anansi the Spider, a tale from the Ashante, children observe a Nazi's wisdom in the matter of fairness. Jim Trulise talks about how Charlotte's Web by E.B. White can be loved and nurture motivation. Most children and young adults have a strong need for books that can curl up inside their lives, that can take up residence in their dreams and ambitions. When reading it aloud, you can see it in their eyes. They want to be a friend like Charlotte. Reading aloud to children stimulates their interests, their emotional development, and their imagination. Vicarious experiences provided by books lead them to an awareness of others and of themselves. When filming a national TV program about the benefits of reading aloud with preschoolers, Memfox demonstrated a delightful read aloud experience with a three-year-old named Ben she shared that having a good time with a preschooler is perhaps the greatest benefit of reading aloud to them. As we share the words and pictures, the ideas and viewpoints, the rhythms and rhymes, the pain and comfort, and the hopes and fears and big issues of life that we encounter together in the pages of a book, we connect through minds and hearts with our children and bond closely in a secret society associated with the books we have shared. The fire of literacy, literacy is created by the emotional sparks between a child, a book, and the person reading. It isn't achieved by the book alone, nor by the child alone, nor by the adult who's reading aloud. It's the relationship winding between all three bringing them together in easy harmony. Another vital area stimulated by reading aloud is the child's language. They will speak and write language primarily 
as how they have heard it spoken. TV language can sometimes be filled with jargon and slang, and it is often imprecise and poorly constructed. Trelease, Trelease notes that literature provides a wealth of language for children to use. Good literature is precise, intelligent, colorful, sensitive, and rich in meaning. It offers children the best hope they have of expressing what they feel. <clears throat> Mem Fox has an interesting chapter on brain research. Here is a portion from that chapter. She begins, children's brains are only 25% developed at birth. From that moment, whenever a baby is fed, cuddled, played with, talked to, sung to, or read to, the other 75% of its brain begins to develop. Amazingly, the crucial connections that determine how clever, creative, and imaginative a child will be are already laid down by the time that child turns one. And the children will have learned all the sounds that make up the native languages they are going to speak. Reading aloud rapidly develops their speaking skills. They can't learn to talk unless they are spoken to. Lively conversations before children turn three have been linked positively to IQ development. In read aloud sessions, the reader and listener can chat about the story, pictures, words, values, and ideas. This sharpens children's brains, helps develop their ability to concentrate at length, to solve problems logically, and to express themselves more easily and clearly. The stories they hear provide them with witty phrases, new sentences, and words of subtle meaning. Reading aloud to children helps them make sense of the print on the page. The more even babies see the print and hear its meaning, they will get the idea that letters, punctuation, and fonts create meaning. Books for the youngest contain rhymes, rhythm, songs, and repetition. Mem Fox states simply, rhymers will be readers. Experts in literacy and child development have discovered that if children know eight nursery rhymes by heart by the time they're four years old, they're usually among the best readers by the time they're eight. I haven't studied that to prove it, but it's interesting. I can still vividly remember my experience with my father and Horton Hatches the Egg by Dr. Seuss. I would bring him the book and he would make room for me in his big chair. It's a story about an elephant who promised a lazy bird that he would sit on her egg for a while while she took a vacation. It's a story full of drama as Horton battles winter storms endures the mockery of his friends and even the hunter's rifles. But he keeps his promise and each time Each time he grows faint-hearted, he says a statement that recurs throughout the story. I can still hear my father's voice as he put on a serious tone and recited with Horton, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100 per cent. And he always let me say cent with him. I would look forward to when he would say it again and I could join in and add my voice to my dad's and to Horton's and thereby help Horton stick to his promise. We read this book many times because I never got tired of the story or the special experience of sitting uh, in my dad's lap and hearing him speak with drama. It was fun. And I loved the feeling of being with him in that chair. I was one of five children and this was time spent just with me. Mem Fox says, this gives children sky-high self-esteem. But you can see what I got uh, from that time together. The drama of story, 
the value of kindness and keeping a promise and determination. Subconsciously, what was growing was a love of words, an attraction to how words work, and the structure of language. Now, my mother read to us just about every night, everything, poetry books, picture books, full-length novels, sports pages, short biographies. Between that and regularly going to, to the library, I haven't been able to keep my nose out of a book since. When reading a book to a child, the biggest thing to keep in mind is happiness, not education. Reading aloud should never be confused as a time to force early reading. They may learn to read at an early age, but if it's a push from the outside, it limits the growth on the inside. In first grade, these children may lag behind others because their imagination and their soul have been stymied. One excellent source of stories are the folk tales from your cultural background. Truths about honesty, justice, self-control, compassion, courage, and kindness are embedded in folk tales universally across cultures. The stories of our own people and culture make us human. When we know the stories of each other, we embrace our common humanity. When we read these stories together with children, we plant vital seeds. Literary scholar, Rudine Sims Bishop, who has been referred to as the mother of multicultural children's literature for her groundbreaking uh, children's literature research, expands on this truth. Books are sometimes windows offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. These windows are also sliding glass doors and readers only have to walk through in imagination to become part of whatever world has been created and recreated by the author. When lighting conditions are just right, however, a window can also be a mirror. Literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Reading then becomes a means of self-affirmation and readers often seek their mirrors in books. So to lead children to become avid readers who harness these benefits from literature lifelong, reading aloud from their earliest ages has enduring value. More than helping them to read better, more than exposing them to good writing, more than developing their imagination, when we read aloud to children, we are helping them find themselves, to discover some meaning in the scheme of things, and to inspire them to bring compassion and kindness to the world. Seeds are sown that will blossom and flourish for the rest of their lives.